Hey guys, Cage Cloud here with my predictions video for Extreme Rules, uh, the raw exclusive pay per view, and therefore I don't really care that much. Um, <laughs> which is kind of the truth. I, raw just doesn't have. I mean, it has better wrestlers, but it's not as good at telling interesting stories with worse characters. Like, or not with worse characters, but worse wrestlers. Like, SmackDown, I think they give it time for their characters to actually be who they are. On Raw a lot, that's not the case. So, anywho, here are my predictions. From what I know so far, the kickoff show is going to be Goldust versus R-Truth. Um... I think Goldust is going to win that. I think this, you know, feud is going to continue for a while, and I think R-Truth might come out on top, which would be good for him. I I, I would like to see R-Truth actually have a world title run. Um, that'll probably be on SmackDown rather than Raw, but because <laughs> they're going to Ginger Mahal, might as well give it to R-Truth. Uh, he, had, he had kind of like a, a title run when he was with TNA, and I don't think he's had one with WWE yet, but I would like to see that happen. The other matches in the card uh, for the main show is uh, Sasha Banks and Rich Swan versus Noam Dar and Alicia Fox in a mixed tags match. Uh, I didn't even know this was happening until I looked it up on the Wikipedia page. Uh, I mean, I watch Raw, but I, I don't get to watch like all of it coherently. Like I don't get to watch all of it at the exact time that it's airing. It's the same case with SmackDown, too. There's usually times where I might miss like a half hour in the mid-show or something. That must have been when they announced this. I mean, I know they were building up the Sasha Banks and Alicia Fox thing. thing. Um, I, I don't think this is a good match. I, this has no build. No build whatsoever. But uh, my prediction for it is is Banks and Rich Swan. Um, I don't know why they're doing that. Like, they, they tried to have multiple, like, you know, female feuds like SmackDown was doing before WrestleMania. But... It seems like, again, this is more about Alicia Fox because, you know, she's dating Dar now. Rich Swan trying to get her. Now he's with Banks for some reason. I don't think they're, like, dating kayfabe, but, like, you know, it just seems seems kind of like an old school Divas feud, rather. More than, like, a modern, you know, female wrestling kind of feud. Anywho. Next match is Austin Aries versus Neville in a submission match for the Cruiserweight Championship. I again think Neville will win. I really hope this is the last between Neville and Austin Aries. I mean, they put on really, really good matches. But I'd like to see Neville face someone else. Um, I'd also like to see Aries face someone else so he can maybe build up a little bit. Because if you go and look at Aries from a WWE perspective... There's very little showcasing him as a wrestler. There's very little, like... There's very little matches of him winning and being very successful. So, he doesn't really have the kind of build that would be necessary to have, like, a four or five match feud, which is really what they're having. Um, Sheamus and Cesaro versus the Hardy Boys in a cage match for the Tag Team Championship. Uh, I think they're going to put on Sheamus and Cesaro... I think even if they're not going with the Broken Hardy gimmick, which they might do, they're going to go with something similar anyways. Um, I don't know how much, really, that Anthem can claim as their property, if any. So, I think WWE is willing to push the envelope a little bit. They don't want to end up in a legal feud, but, like, they might make a Broken Jeff kind of, like a Willow-type situation without making the character Willow. Um, I think that's kind of where they're going with that anyways. I do think they want the Hardy Boys split up before the next Superstar Shake-Up, which before they said was coming um, after SummerSlam. So I think that they want them to maybe have a feud, like a or maybe have like a, a big match at SummerSlam. And after which, you know, Jeff will go to SmackDown or, or stay on Raw and, and Matt will go to Sm SmackDown. Whichever, whichever way that ends up going. Uh, the Miz versus Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Championship, where there is no champion's advantage. So if Dean Ambrose gets DQ'd, the Miz wins. I think the Miz is going to win this. I think almost right away, Kurt's going to come out and tell him that, you know, Maurice can't be um, on the side or whatever. 
she can't just be there during the match. But I think The Miz is still going to win. Uh, I think there's a decent chance that he wins because of the Drifter. Um, or somebody else like that coming in. But regardless, The Miz needs to win anyways. Dean Ambrose hasn't done much with the, with the Intercontinental Championship. I... I just started kind of watching, I think like late 2015, early 2016 again. I watched before in like 2002 and then, and then came back in that period. So I know Dean Ambrose had a long US title run at one point. I never got to see that. His title runs so far, is, well when he was WWE Champion it was, it was decent. But like when he's been Intercontinental Champion, the two times that I've seen it, it's been kind of eh. So, eh. Bailey versus Alexa Bliss in a kendo stick on a pole match for the Raw Women's Championship. Alexa Bliss probably gonna. I could see them going with Bailey, um, especially after how bad the "This Is Your Life" segment goes, and sometimes Vince takes out that anger on you know the people involved, even though it's not necessarily their fault. But I think that Alexa Bliss is is likely going to win. The only reason I could see for Bailey winning is if they're setting up the Bailey and Sasha Banks feud. Um, Roman Reigns versus Finn Balor versus Samoa Joe versus Bray Wyatt versus Seth Rollins for a shot at the Universal Championship at, uh, Great Balls of Fire. That's such a stupid pay-per-view name. Anywho, uh, I think Bray Wyatt wins this. I've heard some rumors recently that Seth Rollins might be winning it. That could be interesting. I don't think Finn Balor is winning it. I know uh, they've been building up Finn Balor as, like, he's the guy that can take the thing away from Lesnar. Which I think is good. I like that. I would prefer if he is the guy to take away the title from Lesnar. But Lesnar should have a few matches going in to kind of build up. And I'm still catching those rumors that Lesnar is going to come back full time. I don't know when. He, he still took his, you know, whatever month sabbatical, which is not going to be six months this year. It's only like two, but still. Uh, or rather three. I think Bray Wyatt's going to be the one to face him. Um, mainly because Vince thinks that you can just toss Bray and he can lose whatever match and that's fine. Um, Samoa and Joe and Finn Balor, those are big time matches. Having Finn Balor and Samoa Joe versus Brock Lesnar. The first case of those matches should not be saved for what everyone knows is going to be a loss. It should be something a bit more like, oh, maybe they might actually win this. Especially Samoa Joe and, like, Brock Lesnar match. There was a table for three, actually, where I think it was Eric Bischoff. I don't know. Um, it was Eric Bischoff, Michael Hayes, and uh, Jim Cornette. And I think it was Eric Bischoff who said that he would like to see Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar in a submission match. And I didn't know until now how much I really wanted that. But, um, yeah, so I, I think they're saving that stuff for later. I think Bray Wyatt is, is winning the, uh, the match at Great, uh, not Great Balls of Fire, at Extreme Rules. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's it for this, uh, for this predictions video. Um, I... I don't like this show. I really don't. I don't like this this pay-per-view at all. Um, the match that I'm most interested in kind of seeing is uh, the five-man match because with those many five talented people in there, it'll be really good. Um, the tag match because I know that Jeff's going to jump off the top of the cage and I wouldn't be surprised if it's to the outside after the match, but we'll see. Um, and the Gold Dust and R Truth match because I know that they're way better than the company has booked them to be, and this is kind of their time to shine, so that should be really good. But other than that, I think this show is is a terrible show. It'll probably end up being like middling uh, after it's all over because of you know the talent of the wrestlers at WWE. They're very talented, but as far as a build goes, it's a pretty crap build. Alright guys, well, I'll talk to you later. Peace!